to. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, December 5th, 2002. 2022. Apologies. This is Molly Joes, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the Chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee and the board, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Uh, Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Ms. Jost, there are five committee members present. Thank you, everybody's present. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Ms. Faya, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Miriam Yarbrough. Mr. Pedro Augusto. Dr. Mary Boswell McComas. Ms. Mildred Charlie Green. Dr. Michael Zarchin. Mr. Chris Hartlove. Here. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie. Here. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Mr. James Corns. Mr. Present. Mr. Pradeep Dixit. Here. Ms. Bashira James. Ms. Jamie Hetzler. Here. Mr. Merrill Plate. Here. Ms. Melanie Webster. Here. Ms. Deborah Piper. Here. Ms. Carla Simons. Ms. Joanne English Calvert. Mr. John Salerno. Here. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya, and good evening, good evening everybody again. Um, this is our last building and contracts meeting for 2022. So Mr. Hartlow, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jose. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlove. I'm the Chief Financial Officer. <coughs> Our first agenda item is uh, contract number COH-915-22, Culturally Responsive Graduate Special Educators. Uh, this contract modification will provide for a delayed start for the cohort for the Office of Organizational Development. Approval is requested to extend the contract for one year. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? I don't see any questions, so Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Sure, uh, COH-902-23 CCBC General Secondary Content Open Course Cohort 2022-2023. This is a new uh, cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort in general secondary content open course. Approval is requested for a one-year contract and contract spending authority of $640,920. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Any questions? 
Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. COH-903-23 Masters of Arts in Teaching Program. This is a new cooperative administration of programs contract for a cohort in Master of Arts in Teaching. Approvals requested for a three-year contract and contract spending authority of $297,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Ms. Joes. Oh, I'm Mr. Sorry. Kuhn, yes. Go I'm ahead, a Ms. Kuhn. Slow on that. <clears throat> um, Mr. Hartlow, these three contracts that we just talked about, um, is there <clears throat> is there an overall plan somewhere that lays um, out what we're doing here? Yes, there is, and I, I believe, and and Ms. Um, Ms. Webster can help can chime in um, if I don't cover all this. But I believe uh, we brought many of these forward at a previous meeting, and these are just some stragglers. But there is an overall plan for making sure that we offer everything that our staff needs uh, to make sure that they're qualified, and that we get uh, we get these. Um, these qualifications, the staff qualified for the best price that we can. <clears throat> so you're right. These have been coming in. They've been coming in over the years uh, that I've been involved in building in contracts. So this is not new. Um, I, my my point in asking is seeing the overall plan and then understanding the execution and and how this is being utilized is what's important to the board, right? I mean, we fully support this and we continue to approve these things as they come in. Um, but I, I think and and we got a new board coming in, so I'm I'm just going to make this request <clears throat> and I don't expect an answer here, but can whoever's in charge of all of this pull together some kind of presentation and just share the plan with the entire board at some upcoming um, meeting so that we we understand it in totality um, and get the long view of it. Um, we can take that request and let's see if that uh, if that data is available and get it and get it to the board. Um, uh, Thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah, you're welcome. Any more questions, committee members? Ms. Ms. Jones, I have a question. Rod McMillan. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Hartlove, I've got to admit that I was a little confused on the cohort piece. I was thinking that if one of our teachers sees a cohort that he or she wants to pursue, that they would go through the process, apply for a position. If the, there was a slot open and they qualified, they would get the slot. Then they could go to this university or college or whatever. And, and take the courses. Am I am I mistaken about that? Is that the process? Um, I believe that that is the process. Um, and um, Ms. It looks like we have a few people here that can can, can help out. So uh, if you guys want to jump in, I would appreciate it. Um, I will let Deb chime in. Absolutely. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Debbie Piper and I'm the coordinator for teacher development in the uh, Department of Organizational Development and Leadership. And I work collaboratively with the Office of Certification um, to design the programs that are coming before this committee this evening. Uh, so these programs are, are being proposed and contracted with colleges and universities to meet the needs of our new teachers who do not have a teacher education background. So we call them conditional certified. So these are teachers who have not already completed a teacher education program, but they are working for us um, as teachers. And so these courses will enable them to meet state certification requirements um, and become uh, permanent, uh, fully certified teachers with the school system. OK, and secondly, I, I've been talking to a, a young teacher that, that's conditional, and she talks, tells me that it's there's the cost involved is so ridiculous and she said Mr. McLean I don't have you know $16,000 or whatever it is 
to put toward, you know, earning these credits. And that's what confuses me on the cohort. Are the individual teachers actually outlaying money? Or I, I was under the impression that they applied, got a position, and then they went through the cohort and the, the classes were basically covered by what we're paying. Am, am I wrong on that? You are not wrong. Um, <clears throat> so each college or university has their own pricing structure. So the contracts that are before us this evening, the CCBC courses uh, will be no cost to participants. So our rate of reimbursement, our $300 a credit is more than enough to pay for the courses in that particular program. Our conditionally certified teachers who choose the Morgan State University MAT program would pay about $110 per credit. So in a, a three credit course then would cost them $330. So it's still a very good price when you consider that a typical graduate course costs somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 at most of our local universities. Um, and the, the Bowie State University program is priced just a little bit higher. It's $133 a credit, uh, but it's still a very good price for a master's degree program. So that's one of the things we look for uh, when we work with the colleges and universities. We look for them to discount their tuition um, and come as close to our rate of reimbursement, which is $300 a credit as possible. And then the only thing that teachers have to pay is what's over and beyond $300 a credit. We don't tend to contract with universities who bill the teachers much more than one to $200 a credit. So I would love it if you would refer that teacher who contacted you to me so that I could help him or her find a cohort that would meet their needs and would be a better price than what they're already finding. I'm not sure where they're finding that kind of price. None of our cohorts would cost that much. OK, great. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking I'm, and I'm glad you, you jumped in. I'm thinking just to piggyback on that, is that if you do this right, you know, if you if you're you know strategic in how you do it, you could probably get your master's degree for very free. little. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I that's yes. what I thought. We have a majority of our cohorts are free to our teachers. The direct billing covers the cost of, of the program. Some of the colleges and universities charge anywhere from one to two hundred dollars a credit over and above the $300 that we pay. Um, and we don't tend to contract with colleges and universities that would bill our teachers more than that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, this is Russ Kuhn. I have a follow on. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know we we have all these cohorts and and you know people come and go, um, but hopefully we can hold on to a large amount of our base, right? And 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 especially young teachers that come in and 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 stay in Baltimore County for their career. Do we track um, uh, success in the program? And then beyond that, like how it relates to overall like quality going forward. Yes, uh, so we do keep detailed records of who's enrolled in each of the cohort programs, um, and that gives us the capacity to track them after the cohort ends. So if the board were to request information about participation in cohorts, you know, the number of employees who finished those cohorts and where those employees are now, we could certainly pull that information together. That would be great information for the full board to see, including the plan. Thank you, I appreciate yes, it. Yes, absolutely. You are very welcome. And, I, and I'm, I, I know that's not my place to ask questions, but it's just interesting to me. Mm -hmm. are, are some of these cohorts, are they just specifically, like I see this one, the one, the one that's that we happen to be on, it says there are 30 conditionally licensed teachers. So they're all gonna be our teachers then in this. Yes. In this, yeah. And do that, does that mean that they kind of, will they do any kind of making it kind of BCPS specific at all? Oh, yes. that's great. Uh Okay. Yeah, in many <laughs> cases, the colleges and universities look to us to provide some adjunct faculty for these programs so that they can, you know, customize the courses a little bit to Baltimore County's curriculum and procedures and expectations for teachers. Thank you. I, I, not my role, but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I'm, it's, I'm nerdy about it and it's uh, <laughs> nice to be able to talk about it and answer questions. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. 
Thank you. Okay, uh, we're changing gears to uh, MWE-804-23 Affordable Care Act Compliance and Administration. This is a new cooperative contract for the Affordable Care Act ACA Compliance and Administration for the Department of Human Resources Operations. Approval is requested for an 11 month contract with one recommended bidder and contracting contract spending authority of $90,000. Thank you, Ms. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? I don't see any in the chat. Uh, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. JBO-710-23 Health Benefit Plans for Baltimore County, Maryland. Uh, this is a, co a new cooperative contract for health benefits for the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option for seven one year extensions with five recommended bidders and contract spending of authority of two million one hundred thirty six thousand dollars. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Um, I have a question, but it looks like Mr. Kuhn has a question, so I'll let him go first. Thank you. It could possibly be the same question. <clears throat> um, Mr. Hartlow, what is changing here? We we already have, and, and I guess, so I have two questions. One, what are we actually paying for? Because this doesn't come anywhere near paying the benefits of our teachers and employees. Is this just for access to these different health providers? That's uh, a good question. Before I dive in, I'll see if Ms. Uh, Webster has, has anything to add. Uh, to to uh, answer your 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 question, Ms. Ms. Webster. The spending authority is simply what BCPS spends um, to obtain the services. This does not include um, payroll deductions for the employees. All right. So when you say obtain these services, this is just a a second, these are products that were that are being offered to our employees. So what are we actually just paying for? I, I don't understand it. I mean, we, we spend sig significant amounts of money on right. these benefits. So this isn't <laughs> this isn't like the percentage that we cover or if we cover all of it, right? And however, you know, our, our employees you know get these benefits. This $2 million doesn't go anywhere near it. Is this just administering these programs somehow? I just am trying to fully understand what, why there's even a cost associated with this. Because we're giving them access to our employees and they should be paying us for that because we spend so much money on it. it, it I'm going it, to it, have, to, go ahead. No, I was going to say it's, it's a good question and I would, um, I would, look at it as you're, you're exactly right. The, the total that we're, we're that, that's flowing through BCPS uh, to the uh, to the vendors is much, much higher um, than that. Um, I'm thinking that this is the administrative cost, but we need we need to follow up and verify that. But this is this is basically the vendors cut in, in, in for 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 uh, administering the program. Is what my my thought is, but we're going to follow up. Right, exactly. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more questions, committee members? Um, Mr. Hartlow, you were not clear on the contract, and honestly, I would like to get the response to Mr. Kuhn's question, if you could, before uh, the, the meeting tomorrow. Um, just as good practice that we have the answers to, to what uh -huh. he asks. I I I uh, I agree, and I I I should be better prepared than that. I will I will be in the future, but we'll get to the answer before tomorrow's meeting. All right, thank you. Um, hearing no more questions, Ms. De Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Okay, the next contract is um, for uh, it's a JBO-709-23 spending accounts administration. Uh, for Baltimore County, Maryland. This is a new cooperative contract for spending account accounts administration 
benefits for health care and dependent care spending accounts. Approval is requested for a five year contract with the option for seven one year extensions with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of six hundred and twelve thousand uh, dollars. This is similar um, uh, the, to the last in that to the last contract in that it was uh, the lead on this was Baltimore County government. Um, uh, but this is for the healthcare spending accounts and the dependent care spending accounts that we offer our uh, our employees as a benefit. Thank you, um, committee members. Any questions? Looks like Mr. Kewen has a question. Um, Mr. Hartlove, ha has the cost accelerated? Because um, it, it has six hundred and twelve thousand over five years which is over $100,000 a year, but it looks like we currently have $50,000 budgeted this year. So it looks like it's almost doubled. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's my question. I, I think this is something we need and we should definitely have for, for our employees, but it just seems like a large increase. Ms. Webster. The spending you, authority. Go ahead, I'm jump sorry. in. I, I thought I saw you looking like you were going to answer, so go ahead. The spending authority is actually for the full 12 years. So we we will follow up with additional information, but the spending authority is actually for the full 12 years. Oh, OK, well, then then that equals 50,000 a year. That's fine. That, that's in line with what you're showing. It's just I, I wouldn't think you would price something that way because for an extension, you'd be coming back asking for more money and to extend the contract. So thank you. Mr. Offerman, did you have a question? All right, hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next question. I mean, next contract. Sure. The next contract is JMI-606-18, Video Production Equipment and Associated Services. This co contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of video production equipment and associated services. Approval is requested to extend the contract for four months. So this is... Um, this is just a contract extension, no modification in the amount. That is correct. It goes from um, the uh, end date of 12 31 2022 to 4 30 2023. All right, thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Um, the next contract is LLY 417 22 USDA processed commodities. Um, this is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Jenny O Turkey Store Sales LLC to Hormel Food Sales LLC. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. Thank you. I just I just want to be clear because there's I think 23 vendors or so here, but you're just specifically talking about changing the name or the ownership of one of those vendors that's all that this is no change in amounts or anything else that's correct it's simply um, a change of the name all right thank you you're welcome thank you mr hartlow thank you Ms. webster uh, we now have mr dixit please proceed with uh, the next contract thank you good evening Ms. Joes, uh, the next contract is JBO-707-18, and this is for interior and exterior door. The request here is to increase the amount by $50,000 uh, and extend the contract for four months. This will give us time for new solicitation and increase the spending authority for the remainder of the contract duration. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Kuhn, is that from a previous question on the chat? Uh, yeah, no questions on this one. Thank you. 
Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is JNI-758-16. This is for uh, preventive maintenance and repairs to emergency generator systems. The request here is uh, to add the amount uh, of $450,000. This will increase the spending authority for the remainder of the contract. No extension and in, in, in time is requested at this point. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. Next contract is JBO-706-22 for uh, desktop delivery office supplies. Uh, this contract will provide for legal and letter size paper for schools and offices. Uh, this contract, this request is really for the procurement of goods under the Oakland County, Michigan contract 005489 and add the amount of $1,290,000 to the contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. Kuhn? Well, Mr. Dixit, um, why are we are we doing this? And are, are we are we going to try and move to a different provider afterwards? So at this time, the main purpose is that the current JBO-706-22 is scheduled to expire on 12-31-22. But the Michigan contract number 005489 is set to expire on 9-30-2023. Uh, so we'd like to extend JBO 706-22 to align with the expiration date of the Oakland County, Michigan contract. And I, I have no objection to that, um, but I did want to, to mention that I've heard that our schools can't actually get paper. Um, and that there's been an issue, a supply chain issue of some sort, uh, and that, for instance, Dumbarton only has colored paper available to them. So if this is our current contractor and they can't meet our needs, why would we, why would we stay with them um, and, and not move somewhere else? So that's a good question. The supply chain issues had impacted paper supply, but we are getting paper now. So it is getting better and better. And I see Ms. Webster there. If you have any additional inform information, please feel free to share. Sure. Uh, we have, I know that we are now able to get paper. We also used um, some other existing contracts over and above this to obtain some spot buys on paper. Um, recently, we had a vendor reach out to us. They had an overstock, so we were able to take advantage of that and obtain some paper. That's all. It is breaking. The supply chain has been resolving. I'm thinking it's been about three to four weeks at this point where we've seen some resolution to the supply chain issues. OK, thank you. I was just concerned that we're throwing more money on someone that can't meet our needs and it just didn't make sense. Understood. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is JBO 708-18 for drain cleaning and associated services. Uh, it will provide for continuous cleaning and inspection of storm drains, roof drains, sanitary line, grease traps. Uh, this will allow time for new solicitation and help us use the contract in the meantime. The modification amount is $150,000 and the extension required is for five months. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? 
Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next one. Next contract is CWA-109-23 for fire alarm system installation, repairs, parts, inspection, and preventive maintenance. This is a new competitively bid contract for these services, and approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending of $4 million. Uh, the funds will be used from operating budget, from capital budget, and for grants. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dixit, I'm just doing some minor math, and it looks like we're budgeting to spend about $400,000 more a year if we're just that's looking at five years. That's correct, because we are expecting a lot more grant money now in the next four or five years than what we have gotten in the past. OK, so we just we're planning on expanding the amount of work and that that's that's why we're increasing the spend by practically double. That's correct. All right, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is NTA-503-23. That's for boiler replacement at McCormick Elementary School. Uh, the contract amount is 511,500, including contingencies. The source of funding our grant that is under ESSER grants, and there were six bidders. Uh, the contract, the request is to be awarded to Baldwin Mechanical, that's the lowest bidder. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any more questions? Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mr. Dixit. You said that this, these are ESSER funds being used? For this, for this contract, it, 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 we have been able to use ESSER funds. Can you, can you explain to me how we're paying for a boiler with ESSER funds? Because it is, comes under the category of HVAC improvements. Boiler is a heating system, part of the heating system. And uh, we had a situation where Bowler needed replacement at McCormick Elementary School. Uh, uh, the Bowler is uh, 15, 16 years old and it's in poor condition. So uh, we took advantage. We took advantage of those grant funds. OK, I, I was just trying to understand the applicability to ESSER. I understand HVAC is part of that, but my understanding was that it had to do with. Basically healthy air in classrooms. Um, I don't object to <laughs> a new boiler at this school. Yeah. Uh, I think that is great that we have a new boiler there or will have a new boiler. I just wanted to make sure it was appropriate use of the funds associated yeah. with the current. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, Mr. McMillian, do you have any questions since you're on the phone and I won't see the chat? No, thank you. I asked my questions earlier about cohorts. All right, thank you. Hearing no more questions, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next quest contract. So the next contract is NTA-502-23 for security system, uh, access control installation, repair, parts, and preventive maintenance. Uh, this is a new competitively bid contract uh, for the maintenance, repair, and upgrade of security access control. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with seven recommended bidders with the spending authority of $12 million over a period of five years. Again, similar to the previous contract, uh, there are additional funds that we have been able to get in the capital budget and grants. So uh, this is higher than what we have used in the past. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. Kuhn? Um, that's that's an old one. I, I don't have any questions on this. Thank you. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none. 
believe, I believe that was the last contract, and, and so uh, I conclude my presentation. Well, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 15 be moved to the full board for approval. And the question is on the recommended approval of contracts 1 through 15 for board action. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Fayer, please call the roll. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Welcome Thank you, Ms. Bayer. You're welcome. There being five in the affirmative, the motion passes unanimously. Contracts 1 through 15 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Building and Contracts Committee will be held on Monday, January 9, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Uh, Actually, there's a point of order. Sorry, I just realized we never made a motion. Nobody seconded it. So, so Ms. Uh, Ms. Jones, uh, because yes. the committee has already voted, uh, the lack of a second is immaterial. OK, so do we need to reprocess it or is that? No, ma'am, the committee has already voted. All right, thank you. Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.